Um, where I, uh, the ministry we do in Cuba, uh, listen, there's so much stuff going on down there, and, and you play a big part of that. I probably don't do a very good job communicating to you all the things that have been done, the houses that have been built, the churches that have been in, 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 uh, enlarged, property that's been purchased, just different things. And, it's, and, and uh, it's just wonderful what God is doing, preparing it so we can get our seminary building completed and, and just wonderful things. And you play a part of that. Uh, the church at La Juanita, which is in Catoro, uh, where Pastor... Uh, the Reverend Doctor, he's a, he's a medical doctor. He, both he and his wife are medical doctors. Uh, Wilfredo and Regla, uh, uh, pastor, and just faithful ministry do such wonderful work. And, uh, and uh, they just look for ways to be Jesus. Now, we got in last night. Uh, normal two-hour trip took five hours to get from BWI to here last night. Uh, automobile accidents and various sundry things, and you know, and uh, you know, Angie and Valerie in the back seat just irritated the Uber driver so bad he had to stop and just get out of the car. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They didn't do that. I didn't do that. We had a great Uber driver, didn't we? Gals, didn't we? Oh my goodness. His name was uh, his first name was Long as my arm, and his last name was Singh, and he was from Punjab. He spoke Punjabi. His brother called, his, father, his son called, and they were, I, I, I don't understand Punjabi, but I know the difference between Punjabi and Urdu and Hindi when I hear it. And I knew that he wasn't speaking Hindi, and I definitely knew he wasn't speaking Urdu. And, and so it had, and I said, uh, I asked him, I said, uh, where are you from? And he said, Punjab. And I said, aha, I thought so. Well, I kind of narrowed it down, process elimination. Anyway, it was great. God just delivered us and blessed us. And, and anyway, back to Dr. Wilfredo. They look for ways to be a blessing to the people and the community and, to, and their witness to the Lord. And in Cuba, there is no retirement system. Do you understand? There's no retirement system. They, everyone gets a ration of rice and beans each month, but it's never enough to live on, you know. They say, well, they have free medical. Oh, yeah, they got free medical. Just pray to God you don't need medicine because you got to buy that yourself. You understand? Uh, uh, the, the, I forget what medicine Christie's on. Z Zarelto. No, that's not a cigarette. Uh, the blood thinner, you know, and, and, you know, they messed our insurance up for a while. Thank God we got that worked out the week before I left, you know. Can you imagine not having insurance since the 1st of September because of their error? And you're getting bills left and right and say, what's all this about? And you go and find out that they made a mistake. And to get them to fess up and then make it right is like, you know, finding hen's teeth. How many teeth have you found in a chicken? <laughs> you know? Anyway, so uh, one of the, the, the house that Dr. Wilfredo lives in, actually it's two houses, you know, they stack them, you know? And he lives in the top, well, the bottom part no one lives in yet, but they have it set up. We, we, they have found, uh, they've purchased, uh, I think there was three in there, wasn't there? Were there three s s old Singer sewing machines? You know, two or three, I can't remember. And the widow ladies come and they make things. Now listen, they don't throw anything away. And they sell them. Now, oh, they make placemats. You know, everybody needs a placemat because in Cuba, 
I mean, those women are fanatics about clean floors. You know, uh, you know their floors are tile if they're not dirt. And so everybody has a mat outside the door because you, you're not going to go barefoot inside their houses because of a lot of reasons. And so, uh, you know, everybody has a mat. Well, uh, the back, uh, well, this is a gift to Spirit and Word Fellowship from those ladies. It's all handmade. Oh, I've got it upside down. And it says in Spanish, Cuba for Christ. Now, the back is a rice bag. Now, Cuba used to be a great producer of rice, but you know the, the triumph of socialism. Now they have to import rice from Vietnam. And that's what this, this is where this, this thing comes from, I think I was reading here. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, and they sell these. They sell these. Uh, uh, and this is their gift, thanking the good people of this congregation for how you support uh, the ministry, the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in Cuba. And uh, this is their gift. And let me tell you, this is a lot of hours. I forget what all these little things, I mean, they look like little pieces of cloth. I don't know what they are. I'm sure there's women here who could tell me everything that quick. But I, I just know there were a lot of hours put in this, and uh, they, they did it because they loved Jesus. And this is your gift. So thank them. They might see this video. And then, you know, uh, when Christy was, uh, we'll try to have a picture presentation. Uh, you know, I'll lean on Angie and Valerie and, Maybe Christy can hook up with them. They can get some pictures together and put some music with it or something. And, and we'll have a presentation next week when Angie and Valerie give a little brief testimony. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, next Sunday, Lord willing. And, uh, you know, Christy was supposed to lead a women's conference. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And so whenever the doctors said, you can't, you can't travel, you, especially you're not going to fly. You can't travel, yada, 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 yada. And so, well, we just, well, we got we to gotta go down there anyway. So uh, just call, just contact Pastor Wilfredo and say, that, postpone the women's conference and, and organize a pastor's conference. And I'll go back teaching the seminary classes that I do. Uh, instruct, you know, teaching pastors how to pastor and leaders how to lead and different things, you know, that, that we've been doing for the last few years. And so, uh, last five years, I guess, four years, doesn't matter. And so, uh, I get down there, and Pastor Wilfredo, he says, uh, uh, of course, he doesn't speak English. Well, he speaks about as much English as I do Spanish. I don't know if he's playing possum or not. Sometimes I think he understands more. Like me, I understand more Spanish, and I let them know, so because I want to know what they're saying. <laughs> well, they, and, and so, and he says, uh, well, uh, Pastor, uh, we've decided to go on with the women's conference. <laughs> you've what? You've decided to do what? He says, yes, uh, we know that God will g help you. He said, he'd better. <laughs> Here I, I had all my stuff together, and so I just closed. I never opened this thing. I said, oh, merciful Jesus, help me. Help me, help me. Help me. Listen, he downloaded stuff in me. I preached stuff I never preached in my life. And, 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 <laughs> and Angie and Valerie says, well, how come we've never heard that? I said, because I never knew it. I mean, I mean, my goodness gracious.
It was scary, but it was fun. <laughs> God showed up, and it was just wonderful. And the Lord was good and greatly to be praised. And so we're back safe and sound, you know, to our trip from BWI. It took five hours because of car wrecks and various sundry things. Not us, but the Lord protected us. I, I felt terrible for, for Gina, who was coming down to get us. She gets down probably within 20 minutes of the airport, and her vehicle decides to die. And she, uh, you know what's so funny? The person who works on her vehicle, uh, and apparently, I, I don't know what all they do. Uh, they have a tow thing, too. They're in Baltimore at a tow yeah. conference. <laughs> I'm not talking about podiatrist. I'm talking about, you know, the truck, tow truck thing. And she calls them up, so they just swing by and pick her up and bring her home. <laughs> Isn't God good? Only God can do stuff like that. I mean, only God can do stuff like that. Let me tell you another little funny. Three days before the conference, the translator that we use informs Pastor Wilfredo that uh, they can't come. Man, panic city for Pastor Wilfredo. And he said, uh, and... Uh, they had, there was a meeting that he was attending in another town in another province, not far from there, but, you know, in Cuba, everywhere is far because transportation is so difficult. And so uh, for us, we think it's a 20-minute drive. For them, it's a three-hour excursion, you know. And so, and he saw this pastor, and he says, uh, you don't know of uh, a translator uh, that... Uh, is available. I need a translator for next week. And he explained to me, he says, well, yes. There, there's a, a lady in our church who teaches English. And so they come. She and her husband, her husband is a tremendous musician. Matter of fact, he sang opera for the National Operatic, whatever it is in Cuba. And he got saved. And whenever, you see, when you're in a, a society that's secular and humanist, they can make fun and jest and mock anything except themselves. And so he had this, this, this song that he had to sing, and it made fun and mocked Joseph, the husband of Mary. Making fun of, oh, yeah, yeah, she didn't get pregnant by a man, ha, ha, you know, and making light of all that. And he refused to sing it. And, of course, eight years of, well, he's unemployed, you see. And he says, you know, but it's really good. Now I can serve God full time. And that's what he does. He, get, he teaches music lessons, singing lessons. Man, that man has a... A golden throat. I mean, and I mean, it's not just opera. I mean, he, he, he sings any, you know. He can sing hymns. He can sing praise and worship. His name is uh, Joel. 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 You know, for you and me. <laughs> Joel. And, uh, and so God brought them in our lives. And it was just like a little connection. You know, just a, a, a good connection. So it's like, they're like our son and our daughter. And they've been married uh, maybe two years or something. Or they're, they're, the newness hadn't wore off yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Of course it hadn't, honey. It's, yeah, baby. <laughs> so anyway, God is good, and we'll have more things to say about it next week, and we'll try to have some pictures. And lot, we have so much to be thankful for in this country. Amen. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it's just... Just visualize every street around here that's so full of potholes. And some of those potholes are big enough that you, you call them lakes. <laughs> that if there is some sidewalk, it's so broken up and tilted... You've got to be an acrobat to keep your balance. 
Now, you ask, you ask Angie and Valerie. I'm telling you straight of it. Ask Christy. She, you know, ask anyone who's been there. That's everyday life there. That's everyday life. You know, a woman's greatest aspiration, if she if she if she's uh, has her own home, is to own a refrigerator. Hopefully, someday she'll be able to afford a refrigerator. And boy, if she's really blessed, a washing machine. Oh, how would you like that? You know, how many ladies in here'd like not to have a washing machine? And the refrigerator. Be kind of tough, wouldn't it? I think you'd be going down to the market and buying stuff every day, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Well, what are we going to eat today? Well, let's see. Beans and rice. What are we going to have tomorrow? Rice and beans. <laughs> and hopefully there's some vegetables, you know, some things that are in season. You know, even in the tropics they have seasons. Everything just doesn't grow all the time. Everything's got a process. You know, I was really hankering for some mangoes, but it's not the season for mangoes. But thank God for papaya. <laughs> Fruit to bomba. <laughs> the Lord is good, amen? amen? He loves us so much. I want to share with you today, just, uh, I'm not going to be long. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying that. I want to continue on in our series on our mission as we prepare a new year. And I'm so thankful for the number of people who are coming to me and saying, Pastor, I'll open my home for a life group. Oh, that's so good. Pastor, I, I'm willing to serve here in the church. Just tell me what I, you want me to do. And I'm telling you, this, this mission, this series, is it, God's already bringing fruit. And, you know, we're preparing and, and uh, you know, we're, we will, uh, uh, in a week or so, um, the elders and I, we're going to get together and we're going to finalize the budget for next year. And, and, and we're just going to trust God for wonderful things. Amen? Amen. Because, you know, if you're, if you're not advancing, you're retreating. Do you realize if you stay in neutral, you can't stay in neutral. You're either in drive or reverse for those who don't understand a stick shift, but you know automatic. Okay? You're either in drive or reverse. If you're in neutral, you just you don't have any power and you're liable to run over the hill. You'll run in the ditch. And we're going to move forward. Amen? Amen. For the glory of the Lord. I'm so excited what God is doing. You know, it's so, it was so great to be six days without any news. My lands. I'm so calm, I could almost go to sleep right now. No news. No news. Now, I did come home, and I, 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 when, we were, when we flew down, we went through Fort Lauderdale. To, but coming back, we could come back through... Uh, Orlando, and then on up to BWI, and I and uh, I was catching. Looks like my Mountaineers got upset yesterday. Forty-five, forty-one. Them old stinking Cowboys from Oklahoma State. Bless them, Lord. Amen. Bless them, Lord. But it's only football. That's all it is. Mountaineer football. <laughs> but it's only football. <laughs> Angie and I, we were talking about football. She says, you know, I always root for West Virginia except when they played Virginia Tech. I said, that's funny. I always root for Virginia Tech except when they play for Virgin <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> it's amazing. I want to continue our study, our, our series on our mission you know our mission, believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Be, be available to the Lord. Believe in Jesus. It, it is, and then uh, we, we need to become uh, uh, 
we need to allow the Lord to work in our heart. It'd help me if I'd get on in the right page, wouldn't it? And then we have to belong to family. And while I, before I forget it, Miss, Miss, Miss Donna, uh, Sister Jules indicated she wants to become part of our church family to me. So you make sure you get all the stuff down and, and all that. Lord's just bringing in new members all the time. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? Now, don't think you're going to get off the hook, Miss Jewel. I'm going to bring you up here at the closed service and let everybody come around and say, welcome, welcome home. But it just crossed my mind, and sometimes I get in a big way and I forget such stuff. Yeah, I actually make mistakes. And so, belong to family is so important. We need to believe in Jesus and belong to family and realize that, that it's all about fellowship. It's all about camaraderie. It's all about loving. It's all about serving together. We're not, to, we're not here by ourselves, and we're not here for ourselves. We're here for the glory of God. We're here to, to bring the, the greatest message, the greatest news the world has ever... That God loves you and He proved it in that while you were yet lost sinners deserving hell, He allowed His Son to come and take your place and bear your sin and die your death and suffer your hell so you could go free. Amen. Hallelujah! I'm glad I got a God like that. How about you? The Lord loves us and cares for us, and I'm excited about that. And now, 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 we need to believe in Jesus, and we need to belong to family, and now we need to get serious about becoming a follower. Now, this is where a lot of Christians miss the boat. They think, I can just pick and choose. I can just do, I can come and go, and I, I have no accountability and all this, you know. I can just do what I want, when I want, how I want, and I have nobody to answer to. I beg to differ with you. You have Almighty God to answer to. You need to, you need to get serious about who you are and what God's purpose is for your life. Get, get serious about you, why you are alive, why you are here upon this earth. It's not just a... Oh, I'm just having a cool time. Man, I'm cool. Look at me, baby. It's not about you, baby. You big baby. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen. To become a follower. To become a follower. As we follow Jesus. Now, now see, this is why some people miss abundant life. They, just, they experience life. They've been born again. They pass from death unto life, but they don't experience abundant life. They don't come to a greater, uh, a greater degree of surrender and service. They don't want to dig any deeper. They just, hey, I'm missing hell, I'm going to heaven, that's all I need. Oh my goodness, he might as well let you die right now then and take you to heaven if that's all you need. He's put us here. He's put us here to be tools in the hand of Almighty God. Amen. He's put us here, you know. He's put us here to be used, to be a blessing to others, to be, to be the kind of person that the Lord wants to, to use for great glory. Great glory. Now you think, you, how many people here have ever heard of a little old preacher, a Dutch woman named Cory Tim Boom? Yep. Cory Tim Boom. I mean, she was just a... She was just a little old Dutch girl, and the Nazis come in and took over, and her daddy, and they were, they were evangelicals. They were born-again people, serving the Lord, and, and, they, and they hid Jews until somebody betrayed them to the Nazis. And Corrie Tim Boom's whole family they all went into the concentration camp, and she's the only one out of her mother, her father, and her sister that came out alive. Little old woman, she was barely five foot tall, never married, never got married. She just preached the gospel. She had the gift of celibacy, one of the spiritual gifts. There's many spiritual gifts. That's one of them. Most people don't have it, but there are those who do. I said, well, I'm fine. I don't, I don't need a, you know, a man to complete me. 
I don't need that. Or I don't need a woman to complete me. I don't need that. You know, that's fine. And that gift can come later on in life. I mean, it doesn't matter when you get it. It's okay if you got it. But most people don't have it. But she had it. And she served the Lord and she preached hard and far and long. And who was she? A little old Dutch woman, you know. Back, my grandma said, well, she, she's a spinster. You know what a spinster is, don't you? It's not somebody who spends a lot of money. You know, she's a woman never married. You know, never married. You know, so a, a woman who just, for whatever reason, doesn't matter. She lived her life in singleness. But not singleness like you think. She was intimate with her God and loved Him. And who is she? She's someone who believed in Jesus. She belonged to family. She believed in the local church. She believed in accountability and getting in with both feet, a place to put her tithe, a place to, to, to give her offerings, a place to support me. She did all those things. But she went beyond that and she became a follower. She realized that every person who gets saved is to have a ministry. Oh, I thought that's just for preachers and teachers and evangelists and prophets and apostles. Well, who ever told you such shenanigans? Every believer is to have a ministry. Every one of us. Now, part of that might be being a good husband or wife. Part of that might be being a good father or mother. But we are to minister beyond ourselves and beyond our immediacy, beyond what is right here. We've got to be able, just like people are telling me, Pastor, I'll open my home. I don't know that I can lead a life group, but I'll, I'll help facilitate one. Or, or if you'll sign somebody, they, we can meet at my house. Do you hear what I'm saying? Have a ministry beyond. To become a follower. That's where you find abundant life. That's where you find abundant life. <clears throat> Here, Valerie's been to Cuba three times now. And Angie, this is her first trip. I bet you it won't be their last. Angie'd flown once before back in 1999 or somewhere way back, you know. And she just wasn't excited about flying. But here she is. Here she is. And Valerie wasn't real happy about flying. But the more she done it, the more she said, man, this is the only way to go. And God set her free. And here, and here Angie is in a season in her life where it's just her, a single woman. It's just her. You know? And she says, you know, I'm going to go. She didn't even have a passport. And she got a passport. And God, through, through this year, She's realized she's just had to trust God and she's doing things she never dreamed she could do. Like the first time in her life she ever went outside of America and where'd she go? To a socialist dictatorship. <laughs> no, it wasn't Canada. <laughs> Do you understand? Here she went. Here she went. And God had so many little things in store for her. You see, and I'm just singling her out because she's recent, and Valerie too. I, over the three trips, Valerie, I could say the same thing about Valerie. How God has just taken her and taken her and stretching her and taken her. Well, shoot. Her husband might be the police officer, but she's the brave one in the house, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? How God will just take you, and they're getting glimpses of an abundant life. You know, not living in fear, not hold up, you know, not clustered together and, 
and just doing my little routine and where I feel safe and where I'm in control. If you will allow God to get you beyond you being in control, you'll experience abundant life like you never dreamed. If you'll let him call the shots and not you. Well, so much for not being long. I'm still in the introduction. <laughs> As we follow Jesus, we be, he helps us to become more like him. When we continue to follow Jesus, we become more concerned for the things of God, for others, and not ourselves. That's what we do. That's what it means to become a follower. Put that first scripture up there I gave you. In Mark 1, 17, is that the first one? Yeah. If it isn't, it should have been. Yeah. Jesus said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Would you? He's asking us to follow him. He's asking us to get beyond our comfort zone and follow him. Mark 9, 33, the scripture says, Then he came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? And they kept silent for the road they uh, had uh, uh, disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. <laughs> Boy, Things haven't changed, have they? Well, I make more money than you. Well, I got a better house than you. You look at my car beside your car. You get the point. Look at my wardrobe compared to yours. You know, I told Christy, I said, Christy, I got shirts, I got stuff in there I've not worn. I mean, it's been 30 pounds ago. I mean, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> And we went through and started taking out short shirts and shirts and all kinds of stuff. And we put them in the suitcase and took them down there. And I took them out. And along right, I said, man, how many she put in here? And they just kept coming out and coming out and laying out and laying out. Two dozen shirts. And Pastor Will Freddy was saying, well, what's this for? I said, it's for it. Whatever you want to do with these, give them away. Do you realize that most Cubans never get a new shirt? Now, they say, those aren't new. It'll be new to them. And I guarantee you, they'll, they'll have them scrubbed so clean. You know the collar thing. They'll have them scrubbed so clean without a washing machine. They got, they got little sinks that's got built-in washboards in them. How many people even know what a washboard is? Okay, okay. Sometimes I date myself. And I guarantee you, when I come back here, there'll be a man come up to me in a shirt that I won't recognize. <laughs> and he'll say, thank you, Pastor. And I said, what for? He'll say, for my new shirt. Do you understand? If you just live for you, you'll never experience what I'm trying to share with you. If you just live for you, how can I have bigger and better? And I, listen, there's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. Now, don't misunderstand me. I want you to have nice clothes, and I definitely want you to have warm ones. Coming from 90 degrees to whatever this is. I want you to be blessed, and I want you to prosper. The Lord wants you to be blessed. The Lord wants you to prosper. Amen. But not so you can just consume it all on yourself. It's so you can bless others beyond yourself. Hmm, hmm. Verse 35 says, And he sat down, called the twelve, and said, If anyone desires to be first, let him be last and servant of all. Amen? 
in, in Mark 10, 43, the scripture says, Yet it shall not be among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Verse 44 says, Whoever deser- desires to be uh, first shall be slave of all, servant of all. Mm. Verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. John 1, 12 says, that, uh, But as many as uh, received him, to them he beca- gave the right to become the children of God to those who believe on his name. And then John 3, 30, John the Baptist said this, when I was asked by Jesus, he said, what's going on here, John? We thought maybe you were the Messiah. He says, nah, he must increase, and I must decrease. I must decrease. I must decrease. You see, the life I have is not mine, it's his. I, I, the, the house I have is not mine, it's his. The car I have is not mine, it's his. The marriage I have is not mine, it's his. It's his. The children I have is really not mine. They're just loans. Trust me. <laughs> they're going to grow up, and they're going to go their own way and do their own thing, and they're going to have victories, and they're going to do as dumb a things as you and I have ever done. <laughs> Just love them. Just love them. Because I want to be the one that they call. Hey, Dad, what about this? What about this? I don't know. Because if you have adult children, you know they do not appreciate unsolicited advice at all. (laughs) But boy, when they ask, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good, and he cares for us. Amen? What does it mean to take yourself off the throne and put Jesus on the throne of your life? What does it really mean? In John 1, 12, we find this. The, uh, no, that's John... 13, I gave, skip on down, skip on down, skip on down, keep going, keep going. I'm trying to shorten this lengthy message. Keep going, keep going, past that. John 1, 12, find John 1, 12, my dear friends. Well, while they're doing that, just let me tell you, we're born self-centered. And you've got to be born again to be Christ-centered. We're born self-centered because of the fall, because of our first parents, Adam and Eve. That fallen nature uh, has come and and sin entered into the world, so it's all about me. That's how we live our lives. You know, oh, I hurt, my pain, my agony. You know, we, we, we... you know, we, we justify how, what we do. Well, you just don't know how I'm neglected, so I do this and I do that. And you don't know how I'm hurt, and, and so I, you know, you abuse this or look at this or take that or drink this. I mean, you know how it works. And, and so we're, built, we're born self-centered, but listen, when, when, when we're born again, we become Christ-centered. And that's the first step away from self-centeredness. A growing, maturing Christian will become less self-centered and more Christ-centered. We become more like Jesus. That's what we do. And, And God becomes greater in us. And when we become less concerned about ourselves, we follow Jesus and become more like Him. And people then can see Jesus in us. When we decide that we're going to walk with Jesus... And I'm going to follow him. He called out to those disciples, Come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. These were businessmen. You know? They were, bit, they weren't, they were gruff. They, they were foul talking, but they were businessmen. I mean, they had multiple boats. and I mean, I, I'm, 
They weren't on food stamps, dear friends. They were living well. And Jesus says, come follow me. You know what I've come to find out? You know, if I, if I ever got the opportunity to go to the White House and, for some function, I'd go. Well, I'd have went if Obama was president. I would have. He's my president. He was my president. And if President Trump, I would go. But you know what? I, I, and Because he's my president too. But you know what I found out? The greatest honor... You know, the Lord just spoke to me while I was in Cuba. This the greatest honor is not to be, a, to be in, the, in the presence of, of famous and powerful and wealthy and, uh, you know, people who, you know, all, the news want to know about these people and they're, they're interested in what you have to say. The greatest honor is to be in the presence of people who have very little but they have Jesus. Amen. There is a humility and a realization that the Lord is my provider that you don't find if you think you're ahead of the curve financially. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad if you got savings or you got investments and you got, th I mean, I want you to prosper. I want you to be blessed, but I want you to use it for the glory of the Lord, not consume it on yourself. You know? I want you to use it for the Lord. Uh, a man who led a nation for nearly 60 years and the people in grinding poverty, yet he died a billionaire. And we know who I'm talking about. Died a billionaire. My God in heaven. It's not about, it, it's about Jesus. I don't care if you live in a million dollar house or a $10,000 house. It's about Jesus. In John 1, 12, the scripture says, But as many received him, to him gave the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. You see, the process of receiving Jesus and believing, you become, you become, this is the gateway to becoming a, 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 a follower of Jesus. Jesus says in Mark 1, 17, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. How does the world see Jesus unless we follow him? Do you hear me? Who are you at work? Who are you at school? Who are you at Walmart or Martin's? Who are you at the mall? Do you hear what I'm saying? That's where people see Jesus. Yeah, Who are you when you are going these places, doing these things? Paul said, it, did I give you Romans 1.1? 1, 1? I hope I did. If I didn't, I should have, should have. As we become more like Jesus, now we're able to both serve others and do what God has called us to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? As we follow Him, then, then you can get your passport and you can get on the airplane and you can go to, to Cuba for a week and you can, and, 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 and you can... Uh, you, and and then God, God will set you up for blessings. I, I, I got to share it. I, just, I, I don't want to steal a lot of thunder. But when we got down there Monday, somehow or another, they found out it was Angie's birthday. So, so, uh, so, uh, oh. She's bragging on it. She looks pretty good for 68, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't 68. It was a lot younger than that. I forgot. I'm teasing you. And so uh, here it is. And so we eat in the, our evening meal out on the porch because it's so blooming hot. You don't want to be inside when you can get out and get a little breeze going. 
and we're eating, you know, whatever, chicken or pork. I don't know. It's either chicken or pork, you know, black beans and rice, and then some other stuff. They can, fi they can fix bananas and plantain more ways than Carter's got liver pills. It's amazing how they do everything they do. But anyway, and then I, I'm sitting at the table, and I can look in the kitchen, through the kitchen door there, and Angie's on the other end, and I looked over there, and they've got this cake. Yeah. And so uh, they bring it out with the candles, and they sing happy birthday to Angie. And Angie just, you know, well, you do the same thing. You just bawled like a baby. <laughs> you know, this expression of love, knowing how precious a dollar is and what they did to make her feel special because it was her birthday and this is the first day they ever met her. Boy, I saw Jesus all over the place. I was blessed just to see Jesus at work. Just to see Jesus. You see, she can tell you other stuff about it next Sunday. But I just had, I could, God is so good. How do people see Jesus in you? You know, how do they, how does people see Jesus? How do they see, as you follow him, as you follow after him, that's how they see Jesus. It's not, well, I'm saved. Yeah, I got baptized. I'm a member of the church. Yeah. Well, when the offering plate comes around, I, I put something in it. Yeah. Well, that's great. And I want you to do that. But how does a lost and dying world see Jesus? How do they see Jesus? How do they see Jesus? as you follow him, as you go out these church house doors and out into this world, that's where they see Jesus. That's where they need to see Jesus. In the, Jesus told his disciples to serve others rather than wash his feet. In John, that's probably the passage of Scripture you were going for a while ago. I probably got them all crazy order. John 13, verses 12, 13, and 14. So when he had washed her feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said, do you know what I've done? Now, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. The leader, son of God, the Messiah, the king of kings, has bent down and washed the disciples' feet. You call me teacher and Lord, Jesus says. Now, it's translated teacher there. You know what the word is? Rabbi. Rabbi. You call me Rabbi and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If you then, if then your Lord and Rabbi, your teacher, have washed your feet, shouldn't you wash other people's feet? In other words, shouldn't you sh serve other people? Shouldn't you serve other people? I said, shouldn't you serve other people? And as you serve other people, that's how you demonstrate Jesus. That's where people can see that you follow Jesus. John 3.30, we read a while ago, He must increase, I must decrease. Becoming a follower of Jesus means to continue, continue to become more like Him. Well, I've been saved for 40 years, preacher. Well, what do you got to show for it? <laughs> How have you changed? How deeper in Christ have you gone? How much more of the Word permeates your life? Walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit is how important to you. I'm amazed how many people say, oh, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but they never flow and not, single, not a single one of them. 
That's not right. That's absolutely not right. Jesus makes us more like Him when we serve others. And as we become more Christ-centered, we become more concerned for others. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Are you willing to become more of a follower of Jesus? 2019 is going to just be a year of great, great blessing. I don't, it has nothing to do with the stock market. It has nothing to do with the Democrats taking over the House of Representatives. <laughs> has everything to do with me and you following Jesus. Amen. Amen.